<laughs> my dad died. Classic start to a funny story. He was buried in a small village in Sussex. I was really close to my dad, so I visited his grave a lot, and I still do. Don't worry, it gets funnier. <laughs> I always took flowers, and my mum visited a lot. She always took flowers, and my grandparents were still alive then, and they always took flowers. My dad's grave frequently resembled a solid third place at the Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> Nice. I don't know what I'm laughing. I find that amusing. But Thank I, you very much. I need to go and visit my mum's grave. Jeez, yeah. I've been shit. Uh, nice, but I felt bad for the guy buried next to my dad. He never had any flowers. Died on Christmas Day, age 37. Wow. No one left him flowers, and now there's a pop-up florist in the grave next door. So I started buying him flowers. That's right. I started buying flowers for a deceased man who I'd never met. I did this for quite some time, but I never mentioned it to anyone. I was a little pri- it was a little private joke with myself. I was making the world a better place one bunch of flowers at a time. I know it sounds weird, but I came to think of him as a friend. I wondered if there was a hidden connection between us. Maybe something secretly drawing me towards him. Maybe we went to the same school, played for the same football club, or whatever. So I googled his name, and ten seconds later, I found him. His wife didn't leave him flowers, but... <laughs> Because on Christmas Day, he murdered her. Oh, my God. I was told it got funnier. After he murdered his wife. <laughs> after he murdered... Oh, my God. After he murdered his wife, he murdered her parents, too. And after that, he jumped in front of the only train going through Balcom Tunnel on Christmas that night. That was why no one ever left him flowers. No one except me, of course. I left him flowers. I left him flowers every couple of weeks. Every couple of weeks for two and a half years. I felt terrible for his wife and her parents now. I wasn't totally. going to leave, right. leave them flowers every couple of weeks for two and a half years, but I did feel like I owed them some sort of an apology. I found out where they were buried, bought flowers, and drove to the cemetery. As I was standing at their graves mumbling apologies, a woman appeared behind me. She wanted to know who I was and why I was leaving flowers for her, or for her aunt and her grandparents. Awkward. I explained, and she said, okay, yeah, that is uh, weird, but it is actually also quite sweet. I said, thanks. It is a bit weird. And, oh, God, by the way, I asked her out for a drink. Incredibly, she said yes. Oh, mate. How, hang on. Just stop there for a second. You agreed to go out for a drink with a guy who's putting flowers on your aunt and grandparents, grandparents slain s- yeah, uh, grave sites because he felt guilty for putting them on your murderous uncle. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't he just take the ones from the murderous uncle's side and just transfer them over? Could have saved some money there. That also. Mm. So I asked her out for a drink. Incredibly, she said yes. Two years later, she said yes again when I asked her to marry me. Oh, my God. And that is how I met my wife. Oh, my God. Jay, sometimes the universe has other plans. That is wild. (laughs) 